Springtime is here and peak solar production is right around the corner. But how can you get the max power out of your solar panels? In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you about the various factors that affect solar panel performance and how you can get the maximum power output from your solar system. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about how to max the output of your solar power system. And I'm gonna be teaching you about a lot of the different factors that affect solar panel performance. So let's start with the question of the video. How do you get the max power out of your solar power system? Well, you're going to see max power or max instantaneous power when the solar panels are operating in pretty much ideal conditions. That means you're getting full direct sunlight on the panels and that sunlight is hitting the panels directly perpendicular. Now, this is only really going to happen during maybe a half hour or an hour window during the middle part of the day uh, and of course you have to have clear skies as well. You don't want diffuse sunlight, you want direct sunlight, and again, hitting the cells near perpendicular. The other thing you want is cool temperatures, but we'll talk more about that later. Now, of course, you're going to have seasonal fluctuations with just how much sunlight you get per day. And that's why we're doing this video now, as we're going into spring, you're going to start seeing some of your peak production days in terms of solar. In fact, if you look at the example here, you can see fluctuations in solar production and energy consumption broken down over the course of the entire year. But oftentimes, if you're living in the Northern Hemisphere or the United States, typically you're gonna see some of your best solar production in spring months, like April and May, when you have a lot of sunlight, but temperatures are still relatively cool. And so really the question that you wanna ask is, not necessarily how do I get the max power from my solar panels, but how do I maximize my total energy production over the course of the entire year? Now, I like to take a step back and explain how solar panels are tested and how they even get their power rating. Because solar panels are rated under two different sets of conditions. You have standard test conditions, or STC, as well as NMOT, or normal module operating temperature, you can also think of that as more realistic real world conditions. Now, when you're talking about standard test conditions, this is tested in a laboratory. You have sunlight applied directly to the solar panel surface at 1000 watts per square meter, uh, and the temperature is kept cool, 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So basically it's just cool, perfect, ideal lab conditions. And that's where the solar panel is gonna get stamped with its nameplate power rating. But realistically in the real world, the solar panels are not gonna be operating in those conditions. As I mentioned earlier, the sunlight is not gonna always be directly hitting the solar cells perpendicular. As the sun moves throughout the sky during the course of the day, you're going to have the sunlight hitting the solar panel at a slight angle. You also may have partly cloudy conditions during the day, so you're not getting that full intense direct sunlight all of the time. And that's why if you look at the NMOT rating on a solar panel, that's gonna be a more accurate representation of what you can expect out of that solar panel under real world conditions. And a big part of those real world conditions is the ambient temperature. Now I mentioned standard test conditions is 77 degrees Fahrenheit, or 25 degrees Celsius. Basically, it's, it's like the temperature in this room right now. It's a comfortable temperature. However, in the real world, especially if you're talking about rooftop solar, you could be dealing with extreme high temperatures. You know, I'm talking about on the rooftop, you could see temperatures 130, 140, even 150 degrees or higher during the middle of the summer. And, you know, solar panels, just like a lot of electrical equipment, when they have to operate at extreme high heat, the efficiency and the performance goes down. Now in the solar panel world, we call this temperature coefficient. And what the temperature coefficient is, it, it's the percentage of power output that is lost for each degree Celsius above the ideal temperature that a solar panel has to operate. Now for those of you who live in extreme hot environments like Southern California, Arizona, Nevada, and Texas, if you're planning on installing a solar power system and you know for a good part of the year, rooftop temperatures are gonna be extremely hot, then you may wanna look at a solar panel that has a low temperature coefficient because what that means is that as the temperatures rise and as that solar panel has to operate in those extreme conditions, the amount of performance that is lost will be less than a standard solar panel. And that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, 
REC. Today's video is brought to you by REC. If you're looking to get the maximum performance for your residential solar and battery storage system, then you need to take a look at the new REC Alpha Pure RX solar modules. REC solar cells are built using heterojunction technology, which is a combination of crystalline silicon and amorphous or thin film silicon. The result is a solar module with extremely high efficiency and industry low degradation rate, all while remaining price competitive. The low temperature coefficient and extra horizontal supports keeps the solar panel performing near peak power even in extreme weather conditions. REC stands behind its award-winning modules with a 25-year ProTrust warranty that covers power, product, and labor. So if you're serious about becoming energy independent, and you want to get the best performance from your solar array, then tell your installer to use REC Alpha Pure RX. The 450 and 460 watt modules are available now at your local solar distributor. Thank you REC for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, another factor that you want to consider when you look at solar panel performance is the degradation rate. And when we talk about degradation rate, what we're talking about is as the solar panels age, they also lose a small percentage of their performance as it goes from year one to year 10, ultimately to the 25 year lifetime of the system. And so a solar panel that has a smaller degradation rate, you're gonna lose less of that production over time, which means more total lifetime energy harvested out of the lifetime of the system. So uh, again, I think you really wanna take a, a more longer term perspective when you're looking at a potential solar investment, it's not just what's the instantaneous max power, uh, it's not even just how much energy do I get in the first year over the course of all four seasons, but it's also what is the total energy I get over the entire 25 year life of the system. And that's where that degradation rate really comes into factor. Because, you know, let's say a premium solar panel like the REC panel we showed earlier is only going to lose about a quarter of 1% of its performance per year, whereas a standard solar panel could lose half a percent or more of its performance per year which again just means that you're not gonna get as much total lifetime production. And that's really the key question when it comes to your return on investment with solar is what is your total lifetime production? How many kilowatt hours are you gonna get out of that solar system over its entire service life? And then finally, you also wanna consider low light performance. Uh, in other words, all watts are not equal when it comes to solar. Some solar panels do a much better job at capturing energy in partial shade conditions or, or partial sh sunlight conditions versus what they put out when they're at peak power under ideal conditions. So if you live in an area where you have overcast weather a large part of the year, having a solar panel that has excellent low light performance, again, could positively contribute to the total lifetime energy production of the system. Uh, and that's why when you look at the REC panel and the heterojunction technology, using a combination of thin film silicon and crystalline silicon, a lot of times it's able to extract energy out of sunlight during those low light conditions where a standard solar panel may not be able to. So folks, really, really the overall message of this video is don't just look at the instantaneous max power. That, that's kind of the headline. That's what, what gets your attention. That's what draws you in. But once you actually do the full shading analysis, uh, as well as the analysis that takes into account different temperature conditions on the roof, the real question you wanna ask is, how much total energy is this system going to yield over the lifetime of the system? So this has been a discussion of how to get the max power out of your solar power system. Um, as always, folks, if you like the videos that you're watching on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, also, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your feed so you don't miss anything. And of course, we wanna get that subscriber count over 100,000. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Help us get over that milestone in 2025. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar or battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe if you already have a couple of price quotes and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment and getting the right size solar system for your environment, uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. You can set up a call with a solar surge expert uh, or just use the free online quote tool to see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the solar surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.